Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Today we're gonna to do our daily technical analysis update of commodities. Uh, we're gonna work our way through the dollar, uh, yields, precious metals, and the commodities and ETFs that I follow. Obviously, I'm gonna interject my financial opinions across the board here, uh, not meant to be used as advice. And if you guys do need any help with anything, you can look um, and see how I'm positioning in the market, at least through finding-value.com. We've got a platinum question and answer session at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time this Sunday. Uh, if you guys want to know what I'm buying, what I'm looking at, what my portfolio's in, and stuff like that. So um, let's dive in here. Let's take a look and see what's going on today. So we've got the DXY. To me, it looks like we are trying to turn over here uh, to some extent. That type of... Uh, rollover we can see a wick at the top here we can see some red candlesticks um it's possible we do go lower generally the dxy follows interest rates and it's really the relative monetary strength or loosening of that currency so a, a tighter monetary stance will increase the dollar generally speaking looser monetary stance generally the dollar fa uh, falls so we're seeing yields fall, and I do think the dollar could fall here in the short term, and maybe even medium term. Uh, this is the two-year yield down 1.23%, so we're down a little bit on the, the two-year yield. Is this a uh, head and shoulders? I don't know. I don't want to claim that, but it sure kind of looks like it to me. Uh, we also have TNX, which is the 10-year yield. That's lower, 1.76%. And then we've got the 30-year yield also dropping lower today at 1.26. Are we going to drop lower with yields on a medium-term basis, or are we going to increase yields? And that is probably one of the most difficult things to know right now. I think the markets, a lot of people will say we're going lower and that we have a, a fear, uh, fear in the market and a recession is coming. That's what most people would say. And maybe that is the case. Um, but we did break this to the upside on the 30-year yields, and this could be a return move where we end up going higher in the future. Uh, I do know that there's a lot of bonds out there that need to be released, and that is generally pressure on yields to go higher, not lower. So that's what we've got right now. Uh, TYX, TNX ratio. Uh, slightly higher, that is positive for the gold price. Uh, but again, DXY is slightly higher. And in the short term, guys, we are going all over the place. It is a battle. Uh, it's very difficult to read because, I mean, obviously we, we've broken this to the upside, which signals precious metals will outperform. But then here in the short term with the debt ceiling and all this other garbage, we've got something here where this looks like we could go down in the short, short term. Uh, so, again, I don't know if we're going to stay down here for a while and bounce, which is a possibility. Uh, I don't know if we're going to come back up. I don't think anyone knows. Uh, but there are ways that you can set up a portfolio or strategy to take advantage of either one of those. Um, and, and right now, it's battling back and forth. That's the, <laughs> the honest-to-God truth there. Um, TLT, these are bond prices moving up higher here on the 20-year. So this is 20-year bond prices. We're back up against this resistance level. We'll see where we go from here. Uh, if there is a recession, we would see this continue on up, in, in my opinion. Uh, and we would see yields drop, which means demand is going into bonds because they are fearful of whatever the market's going to do, a fearful of a market crash, fearful of uh, basically a market crash. Looking at gold, gold is up $5 today, roughly, and we're still above support, and the, the support is this guy here, that support. So we're still above all the support, and we're just kind of settling in right now. Silver up buck 50, or uh, one and a half percent, I should say, not buck 50, one and a half percent. And we're right below that resistance trend line. The trend line that I'm talking about is this guy here, that big kind of longer term blue trend line there. But again, I think the market's trying to figure out which way uh, we want to go. This still looks good to me. 
to go higher, same with gold. Um, generally speaking, if that is true, we probably are going to see yields drop, which means fear of recession is going to win out. Again, though, uh, that's not 100% certainty. Platinum is falling. Uh, we are selling off. That does look like it can continue lower to the downside here in the short term, and maybe we get a really good entry point down here uh, if it were to get that low. Uh, if it were to get that low or even down in the 800s, I would really like that because I'd buy the crap out of it <laughs> uh, if it were to get that low again. Uh, XAU to gold ratio, uh, recovering today up 1.3%. We did pull back a lot uh, with this debt ceiling scare. And that debt ceiling scare, I think, dragged interest rates up with it. Um, precious metals do not like when interest rates go up and when the yield curve inverts. Uh, which we did these past few weeks. So maybe uh, it's a potential opportunity down here at a very cheap price to look at some of these gold and silver mining companies and the physical metals themselves. We are still underneath that trend line and still have not broken it yet. Uh, so there could be a scare in the markets. There could be something that goes on where things go down. Um, we'll see. The CRB index down a little bit. Uh, I do think, well, let's look at the dailies here. Uh, more uh, more downside. It does look like we could see further downside. Uh, what happens here is you generally pull off the top here, and then you get like one last kind of leg down or downward move of a washout move. I think we're getting that washout move right now. And I don't know how big it's going to be. I don't know what it's going to look like. Um, a lot of people, you can throw up Fibonacci retracements. You can do all that stuff. It's not going to be a, a perfect um, measuring stick. I mean, this is what we're at. We're, we're coming to 0 0.382 down at 240. 50% uh, retracements at 215. 61, uh, 0.618 retracements all the way down at 190. So those are your kind of levels. 240s, like 245, two, uh, 220, and 190, just to kind of round them off. Those are possible pullbacks for wave two in the bear trap. It does not mean that every commodity will go that low. Uh, it doesn't mean that we will go that low even. It's highly dependent on the market conditions, highly dependent on what interest rates do and, and all these things. Um, but it is possible. It is possible. The CRB to S&P 500, uh, we're up a little bit today. Again, we're right around that 0.618 area right now. And that's generally a good spot where we turn and move on up. But this is on a ratio. Um, the CRB index could go down further uh, in the short term. I mean, we could we could pull all the way back to 0.786, and that would be one heck of an entry point, I'll tell you that. GDX up 2.35% today. There we are. Uh, we do have kind of that support area right where we're at. So we're right at support. GDXJ also at support somewhere in this vicinity in that range there. And we are bouncing up a little bit, about 2% today. Again, we've got a lot of momentum coming down, so I'm, I'm guessing this is probably gonna do some sort of like bounce, kind of like this here. It always does like these little bounces. Like all these little bottoms, they, they get these little kind of bounces, like an inverted head and shoulders, whatever it is. Double bottom, happens all the time. So we'll see if that happens. SILJ also up 1.57%. Nice little candlestick today, which is a hammer candlestick. And we are kind of at this support level going across here. So we're at support. Uh, crude oil down 2%. I know some people probably getting frustrated at this point. We're continuing to see inventory draws. I didn't see what the inventory draw was this week. Uh, I'll have to look. But uh, we're at, right at support here. We've got a little wick at the bottom. Uh, if we were to look at the date, I bet you these are. This is kind of the uh, short term. You can see this thing bouncing here, and that's what that little wick is. The little wick is that movement there at the bottom here, uh, and hopefully we can get a bounce here and start to move on up instead of instead of lower. Uh, it's possible, but let's wait and see. See what happens here. Uh, on the on the daily though, we do have a little wick at the bottom, and we've seen previous wicks on the bottom where buying pressure's been in this general vicinity. So I expect that area to be supportive uh, with buyers just underneath us. 
Natural gas down a little bit, 2.7%. We're still knocking it out. Uh, we're basically just coming sideways here, putting in a big base. Uh, XOP, yeah, you know me, down 1.5%, a little bit better than crude oil and natural gas itself. Uh, I do think we're coming up to some support level, uh, which is this white line here. And hopefully that support level holds. If we don't hold there, I do think that $100 is possible to the downside. Uh, if we were to come down here and, and touch, what that would do is put us in a inverted shoulder head shoulder. Uh, and that bottomed at around $98, $99 or so. OIH also selling off today, 3.6%. And this does look a little bit weaker than uh, XOP. So we could still head lower in OIH. It's a pretty strong down day today, and it finished quite strong to the downside. Uh, and we're right at that support level, so we'll see if that support level holds. There's that support level. Sprott Physical Uranium Trust exploding out of its pattern to the upside. Um, that looks really good. Now, what happens next? We could see a downward motion tomorrow. Uh, what I call that is a bloody nose. Uh, it's a small down day. It's a profit-taking day generally. But guys, we've broken out for the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust of the near-term downtrend line. That is step one. Step two, 1815. We want to break 1815, get above it. Get up on top of it. I don't care if we sit up there for a little while, but we need to, get, we need to break, get up on top of it, uh, and break all this resistance. We've broken our first resistance line. That is a very positive thing. URNM is also playing ball here. We're up 4.1%, putting in a little wick at the bottom on the monthly. On the daily, nice strong candlestick, bullish engulfing. That generally looks good to go higher. This is what I wait for. I wait for the buying pressure, wait for these bullish engulfing candlesticks to show up, which we have today. And hopefully we can get some upside momentum starting to roll here. Hopefully that's the beginning of the move. And then URNJ up 5.35%, at least what it is right there, also uh, responding to that move. I do think uh, if the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust continues to move higher, I think these are going to move higher with it, the equities. And remember, SWU has already taken off. Uh, generally, after SWU is U308, uranium itself. And then the equities start to, to heat up. And we've seen strength in the commodity itself. So all good things that we're seeing in uranium there. Probably the strongest sector at the moment. TAN, uh, this is a solar ETF. Again, we're just moving sideways. Slightly lower today, but for the most part, we're still at support. COPX down a little bit, 1.23%. Uh, on the longer term, it still looks like we could have further downside pressure uh, for this ETF. Lithium still in its pattern working things out. Uh, REMX is also similar. We're still within the pattern, still working things out within this pattern. The S&P 500, we get a little bit of selling pressure today. We came up against resistance yesterday and it's just kicking ourselves back. Which direction is this going to go? Tough to say, guys. If a recession's coming, we should be throwing large down candlesticks, but we're not really doing that at this moment. Uh, this very well could break to the upside, given how these candlesticks are looking. Uh, larger buying pressure, smaller selling pressure in the short term. NASDAQ also exhibiting that same trait. Bigger buying pressure here, smaller selling pressure. I don't see any reversal candlesticks or anything like that. This still looks okay to try to move higher. Now, the sellers could come at any minute and just want this thing. Uh, that's what I expect, but it's not there yet. Not there yet. We could still have a little bit more upside left in this. Uh, EEM, emerging markets down a little bit, uh, down 9.93%, a little bit stronger dollar today. I still think this is excellent to look at uh, and, and see some buy. If, if we see buying pressure, I think we're going to go higher, not higher because of the buying pressure. If we start seeing buying pressure, um, big green candlesticks is what I think is going to show up. Emerging markets are generally loaded with commodities. I think commodities will eventually rip higher 
Um, I think that they're trying to do everything in their power to keep this thing down. Everything. And I don't think they will. They're not going to be able to do it. They can raise rates. They're going to do everything they can um, to try to keep these guys down, not just emerging markets in general, just commodities in general. And I think eventually it's all going to break apart. Uh, XHB, uh, slightly lower today, to, well, 2% lower today. There we are. And it does look like we could see a little bit more downside. We are getting a little bit of buying pressure with the wick at the bottom. So we could start to try to bottom out somewhere in this general vicinity. It looks like it's going to try here. Uh, move still heading lower. Again, I'm, I'm not touching this thing until we get to the low 70s. That's where I think we'll uh, eventually end up going. Uh, copper, 0.16. Again, let's see where this is going to go. We've got a battle here between buyers and sellers. The downward momentum, a little bit of upward momentum on the short, short term there. Uh, it does look good to try to go higher in the short term, but it's got to overcome that downward momentum. Iron ore up 1.3%. To me, this looks like we're trying to bottom. I think that's going to go higher. Iron ore. I mean, it, it looks like in this general vicinity, we're trying to put in a bottom. We're starting to get bigger candlesticks. The, the, the down days are all real small. That's where we see a, a reversal potential. Uh, it doesn't mean we can't get down to 94, but in this general area, I think it's going to try to put in a bottom here. Nickel down 1.31%. If the recession fears are out there, guys, we're going to see this continue lower. Nickel, copper, these base metals. Aluminum up 0.92% today, which is good. We're starting to get trying to break through this downward uh, trend line and maybe we can break up and move on up here the the overall markets are kind of conflicted here we're, we're seeing data like for instance a full alignment would we, we would see nickel copper and aluminum all go lower if we're coming into this gigantic recession depression but we're not really seeing that we're starting to see iron ore base out we're starting to see aluminum base out we're seeing yields come down but they're from a very high level and it's not really a huge trend so nothing's really in a trend yet. I'll just put it that way. Baltic dry index is getting hit. That's definitely coming to the downside, uh, down 4%. But again, I think this is positioned to go higher eventually as we've broken out of this falling wedge. You get a breakout, a retest, and then a break higher. Newcastle coal still coming on down. It still needs to create a base. We're right above support. Well, we're getting to support. I don't think we're right at it yet, but about $110 is where support's at. You can see how this thing is falling. It's very similar to how it came up. It's falling the way back down. I think we could go 110 even is a possibility before basing out. Ethereum uh, down 1.77% in the short term today. Uh, this still looks good to go higher, though. I think it still looks good. Same with Bitcoin. I still think this could go higher in the short term. Uh, there's not really any reversal candlesticks. Uh, you could say, you know, this kind of looks more like a flag pattern, something on the lines of that, some sort of flag pattern, uh, and there's the pole that we could break to the upside. So I, I still think it looks fine, uh, and we have an inverted head and shoulders right before it. Uh, what is that indicating? You know, maybe they print money. Maybe they do QE. Maybe they do something where they have to do it. I don't know. But if they do that, that's going to reignite everything. That's why BTC and um, Ethereum are kind of just sitting on top of their patterns there. But if they print money, if they do anything, <laughs> I think it's going to go and end up over in commodities. Uh, the reason being is that's where all the shortages are at, and that's where the problems are at. Uh, so they're in a really tough place, the Federal Reserve is. If they print money, for whatever reason, I think it's going to show up in gold. It's going to show up in Bitcoin and Ethereum. It's going to show up in commodities after that. So those are the those are leading indicators. If gold takes off and, and Bitcoin takes off, I think the overall stock market could take off for a, a little bit too. And then eventually the stock market will roll over. Commodities will start to move on up, base out and move on up uh, from wave two to wave three is what it would be, that transition. Uh, we haven't transitioned yet, so don't, don't get too excited. Uranium is looking really good. Uh, we'll see what happens there, guys. I mean, that, that looks really good. Hopefully that momentum can continue. Uh, give it some time. Remember, even if we have some small down days, it's, it's okay. It's not broken. Um, the trend, the trend is higher. Stay with that trend. 
If we break 1815 and hold above 1815 on the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust, good thing. It's all going to be good then. But that's what I've got for today, guys. Thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the website if you guys want to know what I'm doing. And uh, we'll catch you guys later. This is Finding Value.